In this video, I explain reheat cycle or a reheat Rankine cycles. And in this video, I explain the schematic diagram for this topic, TS diagrams, why this reheat cycle is provided in the Rankine cycles. Then after we find out the equation of efficiency for the reheat cycles and the advantages and disadvantages of reheat cycle so first we understand the schematic diagram and the ts diagrams so you already know that in the rankine cycle the four components are there boiler turbine condensers and the pump okay okay so what is the meaning of reheat reheat means steam coming out from the turbine is again heated means it is the reheated okay it is called as the reheat cycles so first component is the boiler in the boiler the water is converted into the steam okay then after the steam is passed from the superheaters okay then after steam is supplied for the second process in the turbine that is called as the expansion process okay it is called as the high pressure turbines okay so in a reheat cycle that is a two turbines are provided or a three or four turbines are provided depending on this requirement so which requirement need to satisfy that i discuss later on okay that's the why the reheat cycle is provided then in this high pressure turbine the isentropic expansion of the steam is carried out and it is called as the process 2 to 3 okay so in a simple rankine cycle what happen the steam coming out from the turbine is supplied to the condensers okay but in reheat cycle what happen this steam is again heated again heated means it is called as the reheat means it is supplied to the reheaters okay so after this high pressure turbine the one reheater is provided okay and in this reheater the steam coming out from the sp turbine is passed inside the tubes and from the outsides the flue gases from the furnace is passed okay means this steam is again heated and then after this steam is again expand in the low pressure turbine so here i written it is the lp lp means the low pressure turbines and in this turbine process 4 to 5 is carried out 4 to 5 means it is isentropic expansion process okay and these both the turbines are produce some work done means they are produce mechanical energy okay so this portion is the shaft and this shaft of the turbine is connected with these generators and the steam coming out from this low pressure turbine is supplied in condenser in the condenser isobaric heat rejection process is carried out then it is supplied to the pump and from the pump water is supplied to this turbine so this is the basic schematic diagram of the reheat cycles now next we draw the ts diagrams so on the y axis temperature is there and on the x axis entropy is there so this is the saturation curve okay this is the point number 1 means boiler inlet points so this is the 1 to 2 process okay and then the after the expansion is carried out what is the meaning of expansion means isentropic expansion we draw the vertical lines okay so this is the three points and after the three point steam is again heated means the temperature of the steam is increased okay so we draw these types of the line so this is the point number four and here this temperature t2 and the temperature t4 are same okay means we take the projection of these two point on the y axis we get the one point that is a t2 is equal to t4 okay means this steam coming out from the high pressure turbine is again heated at the same temperature same temperature means the temperature at the inlet of the high pressure turbines okay means at the inlet of the both the turbine the temperature of the steam are same this t2 and this t4 are same then after this steam is supplied in lp turbine so in the lp turbine the expansion is carried out isentropic so this is point number five then it is in supplied in condenser so in a condenser the steam is converted into this liquid and then after it is supplied to this pump okay so this is the ts diagram and from this ts diagram you see this area is increased this area is increased means this amount of the work done is increased okay so this read heat cycle is also a part of the matter of improving efficiency of the rankine cycle means by providing the reheat cycles in the rankine cycle efficiency of the rankine cycle is increased okay second reason is also there why this reheat cycle is providing rankine cycle so before moving on that i request to like the video and subscribe my channels for watching the more video related to power plant engineering 
and other subject of this mechanical engineering so this topic is also covering engineering thermodynamics okay so more videos of engineering thermodynamics is provided in this playlist okay so you can visit the playlist then you can cover the more videos now so we understand the basic things okay so we are covered the reheat cycles but now we understand why this reheat cycle is provided okay so if we want to increase the efficiency of the simple rankine cycles we have the two methods first by increasing it the pressure of the steam and second is by increasing the temperature of the steam okay so first case we understand by increasing the pressure okay means when we increase the pressure what happen okay so as the initial pressure of the steam is increase initial pressure means the pressure at the inlet of the turbine is increase then what happen expansion ratio in the turbine is increase and the expansion ratio of the turbine is increase then the efficiency is increase okay this is the basic things okay but when we increase the pressure the at the end of the expansion stock the weight steam is achieved okay so that things we understand by using this ts diagram okay so this is the temperature versus entropy diagram that we already understand okay now suppose this is the highest pressures okay here so suppose at this point means from this point number 2 here okay expansion is carried out so what happen we are achieving here some dryness fraction means in this saturation curve middle region is indicate the dryness fraction means at this point number 6 the dryness fraction is zero means here 100% liquid is available and at this curve line that is a saturated vapor line dryness fraction is one okay so in between that is a value of 0 to 1 Okay, means value is increase when we move the right sides. Okay, so suppose we achieve, means suppose we provide the only single turbine. Okay, and the higher the pressures, then what happen? Means suppose the expansion is carried out further two point to the condenser pressures. So here we achieve some one points. Okay, so at this point you see this dryness fraction is lower. Means suppose here the point seventy is there. Okay, and then after we reheat, then what happen? The dryness fraction is increase here the point eighty eight. Means more the dryness fractions the lesser the water okay means the more water is there at the outlet of the turbine then what happen erosion and corrosion chances are increasing okay so suppose i take the more examples that is a lower pressure line is there and from this lower pressure line the this point is supplied to the turbine okay and its expansion is carried out up to the condenser pressure so we achieve one point here so here the higher the dryness fractions okay now we increase the pressure so here i draw the new line for increasing this pressure okay and from this point the steam is supplied to this turbine okay then after the expansion is carried out we getting this point here means here the dryness fraction is increasing dryness fraction is increasing means water content is increase near the end of the turbine now we increase the further the pressure initial pressures of the turbines okay and from this point the expansion is carried out okay means here the we achieve the point so here the dryness fraction is further reduced the dryness fraction is further reduced means water content is increase and water content is increased and the corrosion and erosion chances increase okay so when we increase the pressure in the rankine cycles we need to provide the reheat cycles to reduce this water content presence and the water content present is reduced and the corrosion and erosion is also reduced so this weight steam passing over the turbine blades from the prolonged period prolonged means from many times okay the corrosion and erosions of the turbine blades and increase the losses okay so these reduce the nozzles and the blade efficiency the dryness fraction of the steam is allowed to fall up to 0.88 but not below it during the expansion in the turbine means at the end of the expansions we are require maximum or sorry minimum dryness fraction is 0.88 okay means dryness fraction is reduced from the 0.88 then the chances of corrosion and erosion is more increase means we need to achieve the dryness fraction is 0.88 means dryness fraction is higher than 0.88 means 0.90 0.92 0.94 it is very good okay but we need to maintain 0.88 at last okay not go below and if you go below that then its corrosion and erosion chances are increase the erosion and corrosion difficulties due to the presence of water particle in a steam can be avoided by the reheating of the steam okay so in this diagram you already see I means suppose here we are not doing the reheating then what happen 
from the two point the expansion is carried out up to condenser pressure then we get this point here at the end of expansion okay and after reheating we do this reheating and then after expansion means our exit point means exit point of the turbine is moving right side okay means near to the saturation curve means we are achieving the more dryness fractions and we are achieving more dryness fraction means life of the turbine is increased because the corrosion and erosion of the turbine is reduced so in a reheating the whole steam is extracted from a suitable point in the turbine means full of the steam is extracted means at the point number 3 full steam is taken from the high pressure turbines okay and then its temperature is increased it this temperature is increased by using the flue gases in the boiler and then after its expansion is carried out in another system means this is here we are discussing only the two stage okay but it is also possible that is a three stage are there four stage are there okay means suppose at the second stage the dryness fraction is higher here suppose we achieving dryness fraction is suppose 80 then we need to again reheat means we need to provide three or four stages of the turbines okay okay now we find out the efficiency of the reheat cycles so first we find out the heat supply and here we consider we are neglecting the pump work okay so here we have the two heat supply first one is the boiler and second one is the reheaters okay so heat added in the boiler and the superheater is h2 minus h1 okay so here i written h2 minus h1 plus second heat addition in the reheaters it is the h4 minus h3 then after heat rejected in the condenser it is the 5 h5 minus h6 okay and unit is kilo joule per kilogram work done by the turbine so here two turbine are there so we have the two equations of the turbine work one is the h2 minus h3 next one is the h4 minus h5 then the efficiency of the reheat cycle is the network divided by heat supply so we already find out network done by the turbines okay that is a wt h2 Minus H3 plus H4 minus H5 divided by heat supply. So we already written it. That is H2 minus H1 plus H4 minus H3. Now suppose you can consider the pump work. Okay. So we supply this pump work. So it is considered as the negative work. So here we need to return the negative sign plus that is the H1 minus H6 means we are neglecting the work supplied. Sorry, we are consider that is a work supplied to the pump. Okay. now next we understand these advantages and the disadvantages of the reheat cycles first advantage it increase the work done through the turbine means basic functions or the basic requirement of the reheat cycle is to increase the work done okay second is reduce the erosion of the blade because increase the dryness fraction of the steam at the turbine outlet okay so these are the basic main two advantages increase the work done reduce the erosions and the corrosions of the blade third advantage it increase the thermal efficiency of the plant means efficiency of the plant is increase fourth advantage it reduce 4 to 5% of fuel consumption with a corresponding reduction in a fuel handling means fuel reduction is reduced up to 4 to 5% next advantage the amount of water required in the condenser of the turbine is reduced due to reduction in the specific steam consumption specific steam consumption means the requirement of the steam is reduced and the disadvantages are it is not prefer for a low capacity plant less than 50 megawatt means plant capacities are more than 50 megawatt then and then the reheat cycle is used because the cost of extra pipes equipments and the control make the cycle is more expensive means the more component are heated for the reheat cycle means we need to add the one heat exchangers different pipings are requires and after that its controls are requires okay so this the cost of the system is increase so it is only used for the larger capacity than the 50 megawatts second this advantage with the adoption of the reheat cycles the complexity of the operations and control is increase means if we add the reheat cycles in the rankine cycle then complexity of operations and the control is increase third is advantage at low load the steam passing over the last blade row of the turbine are seriously superheated and that may result in a blade overheating means at the last stage the there is a chances of the overheating of the blade is possible and the last disadvantage it require more floor space to accommodate the longer turbines and reheat piping means we provide the reheat 
reheaters then its uh, size are required for the piping we are required the space and the turbine lead is increased okay so we are required the more space compared to the simple rankine cycles if you learn something then like the video subscribe my channels and don't forget to share with your friends